Ouija time. Oh. Ouija board. <laughs> Can now? Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Game and Read, where we pair a video game with a book and then discuss. I'm Erin. And I'm Peter. Oh. On to what we picked and why. I chose for Erin to play Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. It's a game for the 3DS, uh, published in 2013, developed by Next Level Games, and then of course published by Nintendo as most Luigi games would be. Uh, I chose it for her because she had played games similar to this in her childhood, uh, at least in kind of the cartoony moving around a 3D space thing, something more like Spyro, Crash Bandicoot. I knew Erin loved those games when she was a kid, and so I thought she might enjoy a more modern take on kind of moving around in that fun space, even if it's not, you know, jumping on platforms as much. And I picked Rooms by Lauren Oliver. It's published in 2014 by Echo Press, which is an imprint of HarperCollins. I picked Rooms for Peter first because I read it and really enjoyed it. Um, and also because when he told me about Luigi, he kind of talked about it as this you know, goofy take on a ghost story. And the thing about Rooms is that it's this alternative take on a ghost story. It's a non-traditional ghost story. So I thought it would work really well with uh, Luigi's Mansion, and I thought he would enjoy it. I kind of did. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is a sequel to the 2001 Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube. In Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, the Dark Moon has disappeared from Evershade Valley, and Professor Egad, adorable, calls Luigi in to help giving him the Poltergust 5,500. Oh, it's I thought like it was 2,000. I don't know. It's a pol It's a machine that sucks up ghosts. It's a vacuum cleaner. It's a vacuum cleaner. Sexiest vacuum cleaner. Karen, <laughs> what did you think about the game? What did I think about the game? It was really fun. Um, it was goofy. It was silly at times, but it was still a challenge. There's an element of puzzle in each level. Uh, so you have to figure out the little quirks of each level and each area. There are five areas and each one is distinct. So I uh, found it to be a lot of fun. Um, there are a couple of scenes that definitely were a little, not scary. They played up the spooky ghost aspect. <laughs> Um, I did really love the puzzles all the way through. The old Clockworks level, which I think is the third level, that was my favorite area. Yeah, it was three. Three? That was my favorite area because you have to figure out how the clocks go and what the clocks do, and they clearly do something because you can't get it indoors, but then you have no idea. And those puzzles were really fun. I really enjoyed those. Um, I really found I was really surprised because I thought that it would be a lot harder and I get a lot more frustrated while playing this game. But while I did get frustrated, Peter's laughing because he was there when I got frustrated multiple times. She's How got a habit of just like, like stringing together the most wonderful array of curse words you've ever heard. So, so there were definitely some <laughs> frustrating parts. But, as a non-gamer, I was pleasantly surprised when I completed a level and finished it and beat the bosses, and it was great. So, it was really fun. One thing that I really loved was Professor Egad is adorable in a creepy, bald, baby, scientist minion way. He kind of talks like a minion from Despicable Me. He is Me. kind of like an old baby. But he's would, an would old baby. would be a good way to describe him. He was adorable. <laughs> also kind of rude sometimes because he'd be like, Luigi, I know you're scared, but you have to go anyway. And then he'd pixelate you into the area. Oh. Rude. Anyway, so that was really fun. Um, and the, only, the other thing I would say is that it got really frustrating at the beginning because there's not a lot of direction on what to do. You get figure out, they, he tells you where to go and what your overall objective is, but you have no real clues as to how to get there <laughs> and in what order to do things. And so there were multiple times that I did have to look at a game walkthrough online to figure out how to advance in the level. 
Fair enough. I remember I played this game back in 2013 when it mm -hmm. launched, probably in the summertime of that year. Um, I remember liking it a whole lot uh, overall. I never actually played the one for GameCube, even though I had a GameCube. I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> I mean, overall, pretty fun, interesting to, you know, be Luigi in an action game where you're fighting mm -hmm. things with a sucking gun instead of any sort of normal blaster thing you'd see in most games. And even better, he saves Mario at the end. So Luigi gets his spot in the light, in the limelight. <laughs> because he saves Mario. Actually, I think this came out during the year of Luigi, which was the year. I think it did. Yeah, year of Luigi. And he saves a bunch of Toads, and Toad is my favorite Nintendo character, so that was super uh, fun. Yeah, I'm gonna grab him we have a there Toad. And he saves a lot of Toads, which are my favorite characters. <laughs> so that was a really fun touch. This is awkward. Oh, that was a really fun there. touch of the game. Overall, I would give Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon a 4 out of 5 stars. Yay! So How did you like Rooms? I liked it uh, a pretty good amount. Um, I thought, you know, I, I don't think I've read a ton of books like this overall. It's, you know, pretty much wall-to-wall -wall people dealing with flashbacks and emotional distress and kind a of... A lot being, of emotional distress. Yeah, they're just all kind of like broken folks, a little background, I guess. Um, this man who lives in this house passes away and his estranged family comes to, you know, deal with all his belongings. It's a house they all used to live in until, you know, like six to ten mm -hmm. years prior. Um, and it's his ex-wife, his son and his daughter. Um, and, they're and they're all, they've all got their own issues. I won't get into too much details. They explore them all fairly thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Um, in different ways uh, and so they're all dealing with you know kind of loathing themselves and each other while there are these specters these ghosts that live in the walls of the house in the rooms of the house hence the name um, that have seen this family grow up they're there prior yeah. to the family so it's in well yeah 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 no, the there's there's two ghosts uh, there and you know one is somebody who lived in the house from like the 40s through the 60s or 70s mm -hmm. uh, and then one is a woman who lived there during like the 70s and 80s roughly um, and they <laughs> have plenty of their own baggage too they're ghosts for a reason um, and that all gets explored and dealt with throughout the whole book um, and they, they both kind of hate each other, but also have been each other's company for the past, you know, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's an interesting take on ghosts just because they're very, they're just kind of present. They don't really, they're not able to do much um, to the general space. It's yeah. the total opposite. I'm going to clean my glasses while I keep talking. It's the total opposite of like a Luigi's a Mansion ghost. Yeah. You know, they, they just kind of sit there and watch, and it's very kind of dull for them, but it kind of lets them explore the other aspects of this family as well as dealing with their own stuff. So it's really a book about everyone's, you know, story of, you know, crappy circumstances. Yeah, this is Lauren Oliver's first adult novel. She has written quite a few YA novels. Uh, I haven't read any of them, but uh, this is her first adult novel, and I think there is that, you know, finding that bridge when it's your first adult not when it's a first adult novel after um, YA novels. A YA novel is written differently and has different kinds of um, degrees of stories and gets to different emotions. And so I thought I agree. I think that it is really interesting to see how she deals with it, especially knowing that she comes from a young adult background. I think I like the book overall. I gave it, you know, a 3.5, three stars out of, you know, a five star ranking. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with she, uh, Oliver, the author, Lauren Oliver, mm -hmm. constructed a lot of really interesting kind of character backgrounds. However, when they're all in the same place together at the same time, it just starts to feel, you know, unrealistic and not in the way that a ghost story should be, mm -hmm. um, or a story with ghosts in it should be. And it just kind of feels like, wow, 
what are the odds that these like six people all have horrible backgrounds and kind of right. depressing lives um, and all happen to just be there together dealing with it at the same time and then you know like a book many things get resolved kind of at one point and it just ends up being a little coincidental it was still really enjoyable I think overall just to kind of get used to and learn about these characters uh, but overall you know it wasn't the best of narratives it's mostly you know flashbacks and mm -hmm. dealing with individual person individual person and without a ton of overlap so what do you think about pairing Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon <laughs> with Rooms by Lauren Oliver. Now, I think we kind of shot ourselves in the foot because when we originally just recommended these books for each other, we didn't fully necessarily intend to just kind of do, yeah. or books and games, excuse books me. Books and games, yeah. Uh, intend to do kind of a little YouTube series or whatever we're calling it with right. this. Um, I was just kind of like, oh, you know, it'd be fun if you recommended a book for me because I just recommended Luigi's Mansion for you. Right. Um, <laughs> and I was like, make sure it has ghosts in it, which oh, Aaron yeah. made sure it had ghosts <laughs> in it. However, <laughs> You know, there, there was no ghost busting to be seen, and I was very disappointed with that. <laughs> Not really. Sorry. No, it, it was a good book. Uh, I just don't see... It'd be very difficult to turn this kind of narrative into a video game unless it was a very much just kind of a visual novel, which I know are increasingly popular in different ways, but um, I, I think it left a little bit to be desired in that connection. But I did enjoy reading it overall, which I guess is definitely a benefit. I mean, I definitely think they're two different stories. They're two different um, takes on a ghost story. I did think that it was at least in the same ballpark as each <laughs> other because they are both non-traditional ghost stories. Luigi's Mansion, you are chasing ghosts, but they're ghosts that used to like you. They like they're these. Sweet, <laughs> they used to be like Casper, right, man. They're these sweet ghosts that the dark moons disappeared and they've turned crazy and chaotic. Although, so, were they actually sweet ghosts, or yes, were they just they under were mind sweet. control? They, well, they were under mind control by but the dark by which moon, side? By Boo. Oh, okay. So they're naturally good, and yeah, oh, okay. So the ghosts are naturally good, and so the and. But our chaos, I just think that both of them had a good, non-traditional ghost story. Uh, I do think that they're not necessarily the greatest pair we could have found. <laughs> um, but to take your point of the novel not being a great game, I think the game, the story for the game is a little superficial. I think the story for the game yeah. could have gotten <laughs> deeper. Um, but, like I said, I thought it was pretty fun. I enjoyed Rooms when I read it a year ago. I enjoyed Luigi's Mansion when I played it this month. Yeah. <laughs> they're both they're both enjoyable media for me. Yeah, there, there isn't really a good way to add deep story to Mario games overall. At least they haven't found a great way to do it. I That's mean, I, true. I've played, you know, the various different kinds of Mario games, the uh, the timing RPG type stuff like uh, Super Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, stuff like that. Um, they're okay, but uh, yeah, no, those, those seem to have the deepest Mario storyline, and they're kind of meh at best. It's very much kind of like, beat the big guy, do whatever, and it's pretty much the same with Luigi's Mansion, so I'm not sure how you'd add a deeper story without doing oh, yeah. a big kind of shoot-off tangent from I think the Mario-verse. I think it would have to be a bigger game for it to get a deeper story. Um, five areas with three, four or five levels a piece is decent, but to really get a deeper story, I think it has to be longer. Yeah. But overall, it wasn't the worst pairing we could have picked. A good book, a good game. <laughs> they both had ghosts. They're both enjoyable overall, and yeah. Yeah! We picked the theme for the next video, but we are not going to share it quite yet. Uh, we want to get our book and our video game underway before we uh, let y'all know what our next theme is. So, but we'll definitely be posting about it once we're doing it and should be in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So check, you can, we'll probably do a little video, an update video letting you know, uh, but you can also check us out at gameandread.com. We will have uh, links to this video, to yep. all our videos, Probably some little blog more posts stuff in, in the between, future. some co more content. So if you are interested and you're enjoying this, please check us out. Um, check us out there. 
Yes, and then, oh yeah, Twitter handle. Oh yeah, so, you can you find can us find, on Twitter. <laughs> yes, as individuals, because I am at Nerd in the World, Nerd in the World. And I am at eMerch. Wait, say that again. Thanks so much for watching our first video. Bye! <laughs>